Welcome to Face of Facts. I am Nick Face. We want to wish you a happy 2019. Now celebrating 13 years of Face to Facts. We're a teenager. Oh, wow. It's all downhill from there. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> we uh, have a lot to talk about. We have so many different things to talk about with the Patriots, the Bruins, the Celtics, the Red Sox. So we're going to hopefully cover that in the next hour with you. We have the assembled cast of characters Clowns. once again here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tom soaking, in the middle. Soaking what? Yeah. And Phil over there. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey. First of all, everybody have a good holiday. We haven't been here. This is our first show of the year. Yeah. Decent. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, nice. I mean, I spent it in Europe. So I can't Wait, really? That's right. Yeah, Tom go? was in Europe. That's Where'd right. you yeah. go? Uh, we were, my brother's studying abroad in Bologna, so oh, uh, nice. we went there, and then we went to Lyon in France. Wow. Hey, good on and you, And back to Italy after, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You were. You were like, oh, yeah, I can't. I'm not around. I'm like, yeah. oh, all right. And they yeah. brought it, and they came back in one piece. In one, oh, one I think you said, and one piece. Didn't get no. taken one, down by TSA. Yeah, didn't get <laughs> yeah. taken down by Well, I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. They've been off for a month. Well, not yeah. been off. They haven't been paid that's for a month. They don't really true. care as much. So you can do whatever you want. That is absolutely yeah. true. Well, we do know for one thing, we were just looking at the past episode that we did. Well, I, I was, in a way. And we were talking about the problems that the Patriots were facing. Yeah. And it was the week uh, we did our show the last time was when the Patriots lost to the Steelers at home at, oh, at, at Heinz the, Field. Oh, right. And everybody was oh, doom and gloom. We're all done. Forget it. Folks, we're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> what? I, I, it's, it's shocking. Shocking. I just, just didn't, didn't see that coming. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. But. Oh, he might have. Um, well, first of all, yeah, Tom, Tom has his Patriots sweatshirt on and a Rams hat. So I, Yeah, I got my Super Bowl prediction now. Yeah. On. yeah, I can see that. Actually, Kurt, <laughs> I'll have you take your mic and have this guy point up a bit. You got it upside down. That's all right. Oh, no, but it's also on the... Uh, oh, it might have been upright because it was on, like, the, uh, the thing. Tom's a mess. He is a mess. <laughs> He's soaked. His mic's upside yeah. down. He's wearing a Rams and a patch. But one of the things that... Oh, you're good. Yeah, that's all right. It's going to make more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, it's a lot of trouble. I'll put it here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that works. Well, anyways... <laughs> Sorry, guys. We have a Super Bowl coming up. We did yep. not get a chance to do a show to talk about when the Chargers played the Patriots, so we'll break that down a little bit for you. Which we'll also talk game. about yeah. the Kansas City game, which is still going to go down as one of the probably top five games in the past Brady-Belichick era, yeah. in, in my eyes. And then we'll look at our ex expectations for what we want for the Super Bowl. So, Tom, overall, you have always been right. So, please tell us why you felt, even after the Steelers lost, that would set up for the Patriots to get to this stage. Well, we all expected Kansas City to get to the AFC Championship. Yes. Um, we all expected the Chargers to choke like they usually do mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Uh, so that set up basically the, the uh, entire stage for the AFC Championship. And I um, believe I said that Patrick Mahomes has no playoff experience, and that would set him back against the Patriots. Brady continues to be perfect against rookie quarterbacks in the playoffs. Well, the graphic that they showed during the game, I believe it said that the Patriots had 23 players that had previously been in it was the 23 AFC championship yep. Yep. and I Kansas City had zip. zero um, golden goose egg and it you know and Andy Reid worst one of the worst time managing uh, head coaches head coaching the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes leaves minute and a half for Brady to drive down the field, score a touchdown, go up by three, and give Kansas City a chance to. So in my eyes, from what I'm hearing from, from you as our expert here, mm -hmm. you're not surprised that the Patriots are in the Super Bowl? No. Okay. No. We're just, we're just, it's just, it is what it is. It happens all the time for them. We're, we're used to it, and as long as we have Brady, I don't see anything else changing. Phil, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'll echo what Tom's saying. As long as yeah. you have, like, Shocker. a Brady Belichick. <laughs> well, no, I mean, with hockey, I'll, I'll let, let him lead the way in hockey. I have no right. uh, skate to spin on with that. But, no, oh, yeah, I, but I also thought, I thought uh, the Chargers would have um, given more of a fight. But I guess it's the Chargers. They haven't changed. And I thought Indy, honestly, was going to knock off Kansas City or at least give them more of a fight. Mm -hmm. So, and also Kansas City, like, I don't think their uh, lack of uh, championship 
AFC Championship experience hurt them. I don't yeah. think it did at all. I don't really think experience had anything to do with it no, in this it game. No, didn't it seem, didn't seem to phase the kid. He seemed to be like taken out of the game in the first half, then oh, they adjusted. Yeah. The first half, it seemed like he was, uh, he didn't know what to do with himself. Yeah. I think he, the emotions were running high for the It was a different team. team for the Chiefs that after, in the second half. Yeah. Completely they different. made the adjustments. They, they made they adjustments. Credit, credit to them. Yeah. Which yes. is what helps. I mean, it helped having Andy Reid for a situation like that because he has had playoff experience as a head coach, I believe. Whether he? good or bad. Right. Yeah. right. With the Eagles, it was. I mean, because he, he lost to get no four in the Super Bowl right. yeah. against yeah. the Patriots. But so he great. also, you know, he had been there three previous times in the NFC Championship. And failed, you know, knocking on the door and failed to get in. But uh, he, you know, he's been there. He'd been there. You he's know, he's the been there, and too. he still can't figure out a way to make a pass. So. It, yeah, <laughs> except it for except for 04. I think for the most part, I it, it's it's comical to me that when the season began, there was so much commotion about the dynasty being over. Tom Brady's too old. The Patriots have all these issues and everything. Brady's not showing up to OTAs. The sky is falling. Watch out. The best piece of motivation for the Patriots is for all the critics out there that are the ones come, like Max Kellerman. All, and, two, all two or three of them out of the league. And, and Rob Parker and all these jerks out there that uh, want to continue to fuel the fire. Sure, sure. That set up the stage for the Patriots to have that extra motivation to make this push to get back to the stage they're well, at. Well, you knew Brady was going to want to win in Kansas City after the uh, Los Angeles I kept game. saying that to myself. I go, after the win, of course, against the Chargers, I kept saying, there's, there's just no way that Brady's going to allow himself to go into that stadium and lose the way he did back in 2014. Okay. That's when everybody, the sky is falling, the, the Patriots are done. Especially after the comment he made, too, in the uh, interview after the game. Yep. When he said, uh, yeah, everybody, you know, everybody thinks I'm too stink, old, and I'm too old, and... We can't win games. And Lots of swearing from Brady at the end. And he's oh, yeah. usually not like that. They actually, with Evan Brady Washburn. unfiltered was absolutely go it's gold. Yeah, and Kansas City, like on the field, Evan Washburn came up to him like, are you just dropping that bomb? Yeah, I think and he did. Like they, and they usually they have a delay, so I thought they would have bleeped that, but they didn't. I actually want to go back. Oh, this, this is our this blanking city, YouTube. Phil. Yeah, I mean, but they, yeah, but yeah, they do. I don't understand why they don't bleep it out because they do have a delay. They Does it seem delay. like this year, though, at least from what we saw post game from this win, the emotions are just real high for this team right now. Seems like they care more about it. Maybe it's yeah. because of those one or two dissenting. Maybe somebody needed them. to like kick them in the nuts and and say, you know what, you're done. You're not a good team. You, you know, like they say on Felger and Maz, uh, Tony Maz with Sonny Michelle. Yeah, I was about to bring that up. My cousin. He blows. That to me. He's blank and everything. And, and he's running all over the field and, L and against L.A. and against. And Kansas now you City. got Felger doing the ball gag uh, thing. I don't know if you saw that. That I was. Uh, I see it. I heard that, it. That was a uh, great television. I, I got a say. private message. It seemed like great. he enjoyed it. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> you gotta, you know, take the pain. You know, Daddy needs his. Lick. Kudos to them. Kudos to them for eating crow. Well, yeah. Rex Burkhead hanging on to the ball every time he had possession. Yeah. Oh, well, now you're now you're just if you look at this for game, for the no. <laughs> there was obviously the Patriots need to execute to get the job done, mm. but did they also get lucky as well? Yeah, they got some breaks, man. What yep. are you gonna um, do? Let's look at the Hogan catches. With those being a complete oh, I don't think catch that's or luck. not, I, don't think I that's felt luck. that those were completions. Well, I felt that those I, were solid. Do you think that's luck, though? I don't think that's luck. What do you put in the category no. of luck? I, it just I, seems like everything's set up for the Patriots. Luck, luck I would put in the category of Julian Edelman's catch in the Super Bowl against Atlanta. I, a combination of luck and just staying with it. I mean, I would I would say luck is like, oh, D4 just happened to like goofily like, well, I was offside. And just like put uh, with like a foot offside. And that story is the greatest because it's like the referee is about The game to was over. The game, yeah. Brady threw an interception. But also that that would uh, tease me off is the fact that Gronk is like, it's a little high, but Gronk has it. Like, Gronk ha has it in his hands, and it just falls off. Like, boop. Well, what would we too. be talking yeah. about this week if the Patriots had lost and that interception was... Drop balls, maybe? Or tip well, balls? Well, no. Actually happened. No. The first, what would we be the first, about? The first thing I would have brought up is Jackson's two penalties that... How forced J.C. Jackson's penalties to were, um, score the touchdown. Yep. To 
put them ahead again, and we wouldn't have even had to make a final drive. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But where everybody, at least from what I've talked to, is wow, you know, this is going to be Brady's. You know, could be going for his sixth Super Bowl and everything. It wasn't an A performance from Tom Brady no. on, on when they needed on, him on yeah. Sunday, but, but the clutchness was an A level. Yeah. You know, he delivered when he had to do it. But, but a three interception game, say if that interception happens. But would you happens, blame Brady for not having the, his best performance? Because two of the interceptions came off of balls. Well, that one of the ones caught. from Edelman when he tipped yeah. it, that that one really wasn't his fault. And that's I a tough say for one Brady. too. Like, and if you watch the first from, one in the game, that was just pure stupidity. But if you, if you watch yeah. the Edelman one too, I'm not not blaming that on Brady. It's just a tight window. But Edelman, he has a hand on it. When you do, you should catch it. I mean, yeah. that's your profession. Easier said than done. But also, like, it was, what was it, the lineman was just kind of, the hand was right there, and the ball kind of comes like that as Edelman's coming this way. So he kind of doesn't see it. And do, it's it a has weird... been a problem this season yeah. with the amount of... Well, you said it earlier. Drop the... balls, bobbled yeah. balls, not holding on to stuff. You know, Edelman's been an issue with it. Gronk, Hogan. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? That's why I Dorset. look at sometimes the Hawks Dorset. sometimes. Oh, actually, not as much, but yeah, he has, but... Uh, Cordell, uh, Cordero Patterson. Patterson. Cordell Patterson. He had two. He had one. one in the helmet, pretty much. They tried was, to yeah. get the ball to him, but he just couldn't get effective with it on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, he, he had one sweep. He had though, one. He had one yeah. Yes, he that's had one right. I do remember that. Actually, was there. that but, in like one of the final drives, wasn't it? I yeah, think. one of the final yeah. drives, yeah. It was the the was key like to the game. It was either before the interception or on the, like, the last drive. I think, yeah. The key to the game from, I was able to go back and rewatch it again Monday, and I was looking at some notes to see. How did we actually do what we did? Mm-hmm. The third down completions was what won this game. Mm-hmm. Brady looking for Edelman on all those plays and him delivering with the solid catch to move the chains won that game. They only missed, what, two conversions that entire game on right. third down? Yeah. You can throw Hogan in it. You can throw Gronk in it, too. But well, there was one where they threw the key Gronk player, the key person, person yeah, to did. all of this, to this whole puzzle, is absolutely Edelman in my eyes. Oh, getting what did we not have against the Eagles last year in the Super Bowl? But do you think the Eagles was a? I mean, he wasn't there the whole season. We're perfect when we have Edelman in the Super Bowl. We're but, perfect. I don't yeah, know, but they they didn't have any problems converting. Third. Also had Amendola last year, yeah. which was he was playing. Edelman's basically replaced Amendola in his position. And I agree. Hogan, and Hogan's replaced Edelman. I agree with it. But when we have both Gronk and we have both Edelman together, look at the Atlanta game as well. Yeah, but I also think like... They're key cogs. Yeah, no, they're there. I mean, they're very important. But it's with this, I mean, with Philly, you kind you just couldn't play D. Like, that was just the thing. You didn't have you any couldn't. problem on offense. The only thing... You, actually, you could argue that one, one strip, uh, fumble strip, pretty much, uh, that's the only thing that was uh, like a... The Patriots the never should have lost that against the Eagles. No. Never no. should have. I mean, it was it was more. Oh, I think the team conversion. was in a total state of shock after a year and thinking about everything yeah. going on with Butler not being on the field. I think they were in a total state of shock yeah. and had no idea what to do because the coach, you know, Belichick comes out and says, "Oh, sorry, Butler's not playing." What if he does it again? Like, hey, you know what? Uh, J.C. So, Jackson, JC, you're not playing you're or off. something. Oh yeah, no, but that's I think he I think you're right. I think he I think we were kind of in denial of that too. But he, I think he threw the whole team off because you know when you're there, you need everyone needs to be together and on the same page. What's that phrase? Expect the unexpected. Mm-hmm. Sure, with Belichick always, you know. That's what we've that's what I've learned over the years. You yeah. know, we, we think we've seen it all until the next week. Yeah. So this sets up the stage for the Patriots and the Rams. It's not the St. Louis Rams though anymore, is it? It's the Los Angeles Rams. Don't we have a history of beating a certain city oh, in LA? championships? Mm. The whole beat LA. Didn't Usually. the Red Sox yeah. just do that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And we so, already beat one LA team again this in the playoffs. Here's here's my consensus on things. Much. I want the Patriots really to good. continue to still remain the underdog. Somehow, some way, I want that to continue. Whenever we're the underdog, we win the Super Bowl. When we're projected to win. That's when we don't get the job done. They're wearing the white jerseys, too. When the white jerseys get worn, typically that is a good thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did we wear game, against man. the Eagles? 
the white jerseys, didn't we? I think we wore, wore the white jerseys, but I the, think that was the only that that was only the second loss in the Super Bowl when they've worn. The but white I think jerseys. you know, don't play until these weird superstitions. Just go out there and play. I think it. See, my my biggest thing is knowing that Edelman, Gronk, Brady, you got all everybody healthy. My biggest worry is the offensive line. They're gonna have a big test against Donaldson. Donaldson and Sue. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, was right. one of the most dominant games that the line did, and a lot of it is from Dante Scarnecchia. Yeah. That, there's your offensive court, um, offensive line coach right there. I think that from the job that they did against Kansas City, it's going to translate over to the. But I, I feel like too. there. Are, I feel mm-hmm. like there were a lot of plays where Brady wasn't sensing a lot of things. Like there was that one pl- pass that almost got swatted out of his hand. Oh as he yeah, yeah. It back. But he stepped up a little bit. But he I, did, but I don't think he's sensing he as well. Award, is he? Yeah. I, I would say that overall, I would give the uh, the offensive line an A job against oh, yeah, Kansas City. Oh, sure. they did a great job against Kansas City. I'm just saying. This great is job a, against us, uh, San Diego. Yeah. Uh, not San Diego. Uh, Los Angeles. Well, the, uh, San San Diego, this is going to be a bigger test, though. I mean, you got two of the. Uh, Two of the biggest names in football and on the defense. I think you're right. Coming up against them. Because I, I saw that kind of same body language too. I saw also Brady in Kansas City game kind of shifted up, not in that exact play. Yeah. But he did make a. He found like a soft Ed, Romo, who I love. Actually, I know you guys are up and down. No, I, Romo had a fantastic he did have a great, game. I know, but I know all on season, Sunday. I've been all I've along, enjoying. I've been enjoying him. Romo. But he talked about he found a soft. Uh, place in the pocket. I was going to say taco because I really want tacos right now. But that's just a whole other thing. It's taco Thursday, not Tuesday. I, it could be. It could be any day of taco day for me. <laughs> but no, he uh, moved up to a soft... Because uh, it looked like like he was like... I don't know. Do you remember that play? Do you guys remember that? when uh, He was coming... I forget what... It might have been like the second quarter. where he was I think finding, it was the second quarter. Yeah, like finding a soft spot in like the collapsing pocket. And he did. He minds up... He managed not to, like, you know, Brady's not going to run or do right. anything. And if he does, he's, he's dead, right. dead in the water. Mm-hmm. Oh, mainly because also it's like, oh, they have someone right there. But he found a soft spot right there where he could literally just be there and, like, just whip it. And I think it was, like, uh, obviously it's Edelman, I believe. But mm-hmm. and it was just like, if he, that's kind of the stuff it was we're some of the see third, more, It was the, some of the third down plays. There yeah. were a lot, it was a lot of the third down plays where he found a soft spot in the pocket and was able to sling it to Edelman. Which... Hey, uh, Houston, uh, Ford, and it was a Jenkins. No, who are the other third? The third guy on that uh, defensive line for uh, Kansas City. Either way, like they were handled pretty well. Yeah, considering. Right. When we look at the uh, Rams, there are some key players that we need to be educated on a little bit, so we know ahead of time what the expectation is going to be when the Patriots face the Rams. By no means is this a cupcake. By no means. I think you have one of the best teams in the NFC versus the Patriots, who have been one of the best teams as well, you know, matching off against each other. When you compare a couple of the things, when you look at past Super Bowls from everything, we have 2014. We can obviously go back all the way to 2008 and all that. I'm not. I'm going to look at 2014. you got the Seattle Seahawks. You have 2016 with the Atlanta Falcons. You had last year with the Eagles, and you have this year with the Rams. How do the Rams factor in all of that? Are they the top dog here that they're facing, or is was there a better opponent in the Super Bowl over the past you know, four or five years? Tough question, but let's think about it. Um, I mean, the Seahawks that year. That was a scary team in my eyes. They were I would, up, I would say yeah. I would say Seattle was is the toughest matchup they've had in the past five four four years five years four Super Bowls. I look at Seattle too, and I say uh, that's a defense that was very tricky. You had Richard Sherman there, you had uh, Lynch, you had Russell Wilson, ball all those sort of players right there made the job a little bit more difficult for the Patriots. Then you look at 16. That was with the Falcons. Yeah, you have Matt Ryan and that powerful yeah. offense. That looked like it was going to be a, a tough game, but it really, really wasn't. Well, I think a lot of us came into that game expecting the Patriots to, to win. If, I, if we revert back, we might have to, you know, cue the tapes back sure. a couple of years. I mean, we, we all know we talked about it right. when it was going on, but I looked at it and I said, they're beatable. Because they really had never been there from before. I look at Atlanta and the Rams, kind, kind of similar, but with the Rams having a little bit better defense. So maybe I have the Rams' defense being Seattle's, but the offense, 
I, I think Atlanta had more of a powerhouse. The, the, Rams. the Eagles, to me, were, were a juggernaut. They, they were... Yeah, and, they were loaded. They were an unknown. They hadn't been there from before. But they you know, were a loaded team. Like, you could see from the season, they were like a loaded... No, they did. They did. Not to discredit any of them no, from no, that. No. I just look... Uh, trying to balance it out, I think you have more of a challenge than expected, than some people are thinking. I don't think the Rams are going to be easily beat. I don't either. I don't. I think it's. Uh, I think the offense is. It's going. The defense is going to have an easier time against the offense because the Rams don't have Cooper Cup. Correct. Um, I think that makes it a little easier for them. They are facing Brandon Cooks. They are. So they facing, should have the book on him pretty good. Oh, absolutely. Who covers then Brandon Cooks? Is he their lead receiver I, right now? I can't even name any other. I mean, receiver I would put <laughs> Jackson on him and then someone over the top and then. Maybe Gilmore on Woods or whatnot. That's Robert Woods. Woods that's yeah. the other one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because they don't. Yeah, because they don't have. I mean, they have some other receivers. And they have Gurley, and then you have Anderson. I mean, Gurley can do it all, though. But will he be 100 percent? Well, here's matter? what I look yeah, at from the run. Even, I'm never concerned on the running game. I'm never concerned on the well, running the game run, when it comes to the Patriots. Well, uh, more They've always been able to stop big game. names. Melvin Gordon did but, absolutely but Gur- Zipola. Yeah, but he was very. He was hurt. He was hurt. He was hurt. And uh, Williamson, no, they have handled it, though. I mean, Williamson. They handled the running game pretty effectively when the big star is But also is there. they kind of abandoned it um, when they were down 14 nothing. It seems like they've always they've played from behind in these playoffs. They haven't had that moment where it's just like 7-7 seven, seven, or 14-7. Yeah. Well, they should have been up later 28 nothing in the Kansas City game. Well, we also didn't get a chance to yeah, talk about like the whole 17, Saints, should have three or four yeah. Saints, Saints yeah, and Rams matchup from it because let's be honest here. Should be the Saints. Should be. Well, there should be a Breeze and oh, Brady well, Super Bowl. Neither, whole, neither, whole bag of neither bones, game right? in the championship on championship weekend should have been gone to should have gone to overtime. Yep. Because mm-hmm. if it hadn't been for JC Jackson getting offsides and pass interference, Kansas City would have still been on their side of the field. Yeah. Or yeah, I, I Dante can Hightower that. would have gotten that fumble. Correct. And that was one of the biggest things I was like, you mother. And Out was, of everything that we've seen from the past two playoff games, yeah. there's been no interceptions. For the Patriots. Oh, on the defensive end. Which is crazy to me. And they had a couple of chances. Well, they almost had a lot one of, in they, the end zone. More they than a couple. One in the end zone. More than a couple. Oh, no. One of them was right in the chest. One yeah. was right in the end zone, one. but there also was a couple others. Weren't there, like, Van Noy actually almost had one on the... Van, Van Noy, Noy was one, one yeah. On the uh, Kelsey touchdown. And not to say they haven't played well. They have. It's no, just they, have. they haven't been able to get that big interception no, just had result. An, and against the Chargers, they had a... So oh, that seems to me like it's coming. No, they got one against the Chargers. Did we? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, I, I don't think we, got one. we did. We did. Who get was one. it? It was Gilmore, I believe. It was in the first half when yeah. they were just absolutely running all over them. I think. Yeah, I think. Well, it, I'm gonna have to look back on it. Yeah, it might have been the second, but it, I knew was it, it was. Was it a McCourty? It, it, no, uh, I thought it was Gilmore, wasn't it? It was either. I want to say it was either Gilmore or it was uh, Jason McCourty because Jason McCourty had a big okay. game against the Chargers. And this we'll have to look we back on it. So I stand corrected on that. We're using our lifeline, asking asking the audience. We found a friend. Yeah. No, but that's uh, but they haven't. I don't think they've had that staple like interception that really that change of possession that really meant something. Right. Well, I mean the fumbled um, punt return. Mm-hmm. The like block. that was okay. crazy. Yeah. That was nuts. That was a big play. From Shane McClellan, or was it no? It, it, not, not Shane. Is it? Well, he was that former. I, it's something McClellan. It's something. Yeah. yeah, we've had too many McClellan. Yeah, but overall, from from from. That standpoint on, on the Saints and the, oh, and the Rams ridiculous. game, it was ridiculous how the officials can honestly be that controversial how, how in a game you, like they that. Have, they have it's it's deplorable. Yeah. How many officials? Do they Aren't have there on six field? on the field? Six. Oh, I think there's seven. Are there seven? But no, I, they're, they're roughly like whatever. It's, it's like six it's or like seven. six days. It's, yeah. it's six day. We'll say it's six yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Out of all the officials on the field, the ball's going in one direction. How does? How do none of them? See where the ball's going and see what's going on where the ball's going and completely miss a blatant head to head contact play, a what should have been an ejection from the game, what should have been an automatic first down, ball at the spot of the foul, 
and Saints just kneel the ball and end the game right then and there. Giants, they all were doing something at the time. They had their own stuff they're dealing with. What were they doing, playing Fortnite, cramping yeah, up their hands? they were. They were just playing with, with their Price. friend, David, DP. <laughs> hey, DP, what's going on? Oh, right. let's, uh, let me get this game Ooh, in quick while this play is going. Fortnite. Meanwhile, Goodell's at the Kansas at Kansas City oh, yeah. watching the Patriots game, twiddling with his thumbs, making sure that he's... He wasn't at the Kansas City game. He was. Yes, I thought he was, was. an honorary No, captain. he went to the Saints and Rams game. No, he was. At, he gave a no, jersey to a guy. He was at. The, he was an honorary captain. He was at in Kansas of, City. They Kansas showed City. him. Well, in the I was at Impractical Jokers from Sunday, so I was watching the game with my headphones on. Oh, there you on. go. So I'm sorry, I didn't see the. Opening. Oh yeah, so they were at the oh, Wilbur, right? right? I Jokers? was. Yeah. Oh, Wilbur's a great. Hi, <laughs> But, yeah, no, Goodell was yeah, at the game was at, twiddling his thumbs. I thought thumbs, he was at make, the other one. I'm, no, 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 I he was twiddling corrected. his thumbs, making sure that no one knew that he paid the refs off at the Saints and Browns game. But what, I mean, honestly, I think, you know, it'd, it'd probably be better for the NFL if the Saints got in. You get more people there, but. So many people. I yeah. Know, like, how many? Like, that would have been a fun. Oh, the Rams are fun, too. I would, love, I would love a Breeze Brady. And we're, yeah. ne- and we're the, never going to get it now. I was rooting for that. Yeah. And we're never going to get it now. Nope. Hey, you might not. Ne- I don't know. No, we're not. <laughs> I, we're not going to get it. They might. I don't know if they're, they're Saints going have anywhere. that like one good run every four years, and then they but don't do anything. But they've been hovering around. Like if you have Kamara, and if he's there next year, I think Perfect. it's a good. But I, I hear what you're saying. You can't you can't bank on that. But uh, plus, if the Patriots win the Super Bowl, Brady's probably out. I kind of hope he. Oh, stop! He is not. I kind of hope, in my heart of hearts, oh, I wanted the right up. You are out of your minds. I'm not out of my mind. I think I'm pretty. No, he's not going to retire this year because they don't have a. They don't have already a said he's they coming don't, back next year. They don't year. have a reliable starting quarterback. For Brian Hoyer, to... baby. Oh, please. No, but can we go back. back to the Kansas City <laughs> game where uh, your NFL commissioner is the honorary captain? I don't know how many times I can say that, but that seems so ridiculous. Honorary buffoon. He's an, well, honorary captain of Case, uh, Kansas well, City. Well, what made up for it was Vince Wolfork was an honorary captain. It was well. great, and he yeah. was, he had a nice gold chain. He was just yeah. there, like I felt like he was going to shake us down. It was great. Before we talk about what our predictions are when the Super Bowl comes, I do want to tell you the story on why I felt very confident with Kans- with uh, the Patriots beating Kansas City on Sunday. So we all know it snowed Sunday. So we had a lot of snow and everything to clear. So I go outside, go and clear some stuff, get to this path where I'm trying to get stuff you know, moved. I got the snowblower with me and all, and I look down and I notice that there's something on the ground. So I stop the snowblower, I go over and see what it is. So if you know what we do at Sports Zone, we give sports cards to kids. I had some loose cards that had apparently fallen out of my truck. But the plow had come by, and it had already kind of plowed it up onto like a mound, and it must have like blown away or something. So I looked down at the card, and I noticed that it's all kind of ripped up and crimpled and everything. And um, I'm like, oh, that kind of stinks. I go and pick it up. Lo and behold, it's a Kansas City player card. It ended up being Tyreek Hill. You use your voodoo, your voodoo magic. <laughs> so I looked on Tyreek at it, Hill. and I and said, "And you're saying we can't wow. believe in superstition?" I go, "I feel <laughs> yeah. real confident today about getting that win." But what are the odds of that happening? No, I mean, it's, it's definitely a... Uh, that was just an omen right there that sure. just said, we're just going to go out. We didn't really destroy him, but I mean... We no, I guess there the was win. the capacity. So, well, we kind of did in the first half. Tariq Hill, or Tyreek Hill. What did he have, one touchdown? No, yeah, he, no touchdown. He, he had one, uh, oh, one, uh, big one big catch. play. One big yeah, play. One catch. Yeah, one catch. Because I think but Gilmore got burnt either. on some kind of a coverage. But overall, I mean, they did a nice job with... with well, actually, Gilmore wasn't... Uh, he was covering Sammy Watkins, which was a bigger... Oh, this is, it was J.C. Jackson it was, or whoever it was. It was like, yeah, or like, McCourty or something like I think someone, it was one of the McCourty's. Someone blew a... It was one of the McCourty's that blew the coverage on it. So but that was my yeah. little story on that. Kind of weird how that happened. Uh, we want to talk about the predictions now. On I what actually it, just believe in our team. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what our expectation is going to be. I'm basing it on I'll the science of I'll save mine for love. last because. Well, no, always. We know. Yeah, sure. Um, let's go to Phil first. What oh, you, prediction. Oh, we're, mi- we're mixing it up. Here we go. Uh, I don't know. I, Winner I, and score. I had uh, Pats 24 20. I think. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game. And okay. I could be dead wrong because we also happened last year. But I also think this might be, it might be a ground game here. It might be something where they don't air out as much. Yep. Yeah, I mean, C.J. Anderson is a guy who knows the, uh, the Patriots in a way, like he's faced them against Denver, and I, I figure what, he's been with other teams as well yep. as of uh, in the past couple of years. But 
Denver has had some, some success against them. And L.A. now has, like, the two-headed running back of Gurley and C.J. Anderson. Mm-hmm. And Gurley is a great uh, catchback. He's, he, he's a James White who can also run. Yep. So and a James White can run, too. But, I mean, and he actually picked up a, a good amount of third down. Not as good as Sonny Michel, though. No, no. I... <laughs> I do love uh, Sony Michelle. But, you know, James he stinks. Super, super no, but I, I can understand the argument that it doesn't matter. He blows, matter. Mike. He blows. Well, I, don't, I understand the argument that it doesn't matter who that running back is. Yeah. Like, if you have a, a line like that. And he, Sony Michelle even mentioned it himself after uh, the Chargers The game. mixing it up with, with Michelle and Burkhead and White and, and all those guys is a major advantage for the Patriots. Yeah, and Devlin. Don't forget Devlin. And Devlin as well. Like a, when you can do that, use them when you have more one. tools, mm-hmm. it's a lot harder to, to defend is, that. He is yeah. a secret weapon. And maybe yeah. they were just saving the, those plays for him for the Super Bowl. Who knows? But I think, yeah, I think that like quadrant of uh, backs, those those four horsemen of backs, and I don't know, I think the Pats would, uh, I think their line's going to have a, uh, have a, not a hard time, they're going to have their uh, work cut out for it's them. It's a challenge. Yeah. I it's mean, Donald, I mean, I think it's going to be a close game. 24-20, though. That's 24-20, what you go. 24-20. Okay. But I hope for a blowout for the Pats. We've, We've never, never had, had one. We've never had it, and I would love to just relax and just... You know it's not going to happen. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. Yeah, like, in my heart... Know that. Yeah, we all know it, but I'm trying to delude myself into a... Yeah. Like, lead it up like, oh, gee, Willikers. Like, you yeah. know... Let's have a nice, relaxing Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, no. We're going to have... Uh, yeah. What do you think, Tom? Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the pattern uh, of coming out strong in the first half and uh, I don't know I think they're gonna come out strong in the first half I think it's gonna be a, uh, somewhat similar to the Kansas City game um, for those of you that don't know the Super Bowl is being hosted in Atlanta mm-hmm. um, twenty eight to three I'm gonna yeah, I'm yeah. expecting to see a lot of those flags around the stadium at that game at oh twenty eight to three twenty eight to three flags oh. That's well, my score. Because Atlanta yeah, 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 was I know. up 28-3. I know, I know. But Super Bowl's in Atlanta. From, from a lot, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that just because of the Pat fans or because people from Atlanta are like, you know what, we just want to show this ironically. <laughs> Both. Uh, who knows? I, expect to, I just expect to you see expect a lot it? of them. Uh, maybe. Um, but I think the score will be. This is tough. This is always the toughest part of it. It is a tough part. Uh, I'm gonna go bold. I'm gonna say thirty to sixteen pets. Wow, that's fairly that's a, cushy. That's a cushy, yeah. Ish. Two touchdown one. Who's your MVP? <sighs> May I? Uh, sure. Kyle Van Noy. It. Just thinking about it. Van Noy. Can't, Kyle Van. I would like love, it. Yeah, I. I don't like know. it. I've bold, always liked the bold guy. Bold choice. Eh, he's been making plays. He has been. All playoffs. Oh, I'm a bit. I like year. him. Good. I'm a fan. Yeah. It's it's gonna be based on performance, but it'll probably be Tom Brady. <laughs> Cause they'll give it. Tom Van Noy will have like two interceptions and two fumble recoveries, but it'll be Tom Brady. Will. Brady got well, the MVP we, we, in sixteen, right? He did. He yeah. did, and he turned over the truck to um, uh, James White. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because he's he's the real MVP. He was the real MVP. He kind of got backed into that mm-hmm. uh, on the radio. He was like, uh. um, and all that though. I'm gonna say it's I'm gonna say it's Brady, but Brady's gonna turn the truck over to Van Noy. Why not? And he just rides it off, murders mm-hmm. a couple people on the way out. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't mean it. And then that's... Very Patriot-esque. I'm going to go 28. Okay. That will be their, their score. But I'm going to give, I'm gonna give uh, the Rams a little bit of love, too. I'm going to go 28-24. It's going to be a nail-biter. Yeah, there you go. My MVP is Julian Edelman. He's never gotten it. He's never gotten it. I when he's there... Might... I think that this, kind of like 16, when Brady got suspended and all, he was the MVP. Well, we're going to see it, you know, yeah. do, do a 180. That's a good point. That's we're going to have, point. we're going to, maybe Brady plays great and all, but Brady will turn it over if Brady is the MVP and get the truck and all that stuff, and the stuff will go to Edelman. Well, here's, That's my thought. 28-24 Patriots. Here's another You're going to be on the edge of your seat, question. and I see another comeback as well from the Patriots. They could be down oh, at right. some point. And Brady and the team leads them to the victory. Edelman, Edelman gets the winning touchdown. How about that? Well, all right. Well, let's get to I'll the. I'll go extra bold. Let's on get that. to the craziness right now, uh, Gronk. What's he's he drinking? Gonna be dark like? roast coffee. Extra yeah, bold. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all yeah. Down the addiction. 
Gronk. Yes. What what is his status? How is he going to play out? Is this his final game? I think this is Gronk's final game. I think that he goes out as a champion. I think he's, I think go he's out enjoyed big. the past month yeah. with getting to the stage he's at. I just don't think Gronk loves football anymore. I think he's kicking it into gear here because he wants to go out as a champion, yeah. wants to win it all. But if anyone's going to retire at the end this year, it's, I think it's going to be Gronk. I think he's beaten up quite a bit. I think his body's taking a toll on him. I love that video of him and uh, Brady on Instagram. When Brady, they're walking down the, the hallway of uh, the stadium, I think it is, and they're just like listening to a song. And Brady's just like bobbing his head, and then he pans over to Gronk, and Gronk's like, mm-hmm. "There you go." Now, do you guys think anybody else retires after this? You think Brady will? Uh, no, I don't think Brady okay. will. I was just I, messing around. I, I wanted to get you fired up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, you succeeded. I wanted him to retire after the if they won the Eagles. Um, which I think would have happened. Super Bowl. Yeah, no, I agree. Because they had Jimmy G, and they would have all would have been. Uh, oh no, he, no, we did not. No, no, no we did. No. Right. But no, no, from Atlanta, that would have been the yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, yeah, anyone, I guess any one of these. But uh, I would like to see him on top. Wants leave. to continue to play. I don't think his wife does. So. I, think I think she's that's... getting more into it. No, yeah, she's really? she's supporting him. They she's had like a happen. special on and everything. <laughs> and they, she was yeah. talking. Well, hey, whatever. No, the, uh, she she's like as long as he still loves the game, then I'm okay with him playing. I will 100 percent. If he's not say getting hit, that I am kind of, confident in saying that the Patriots go out as champions. Dante Scarnecchia does retire. I think he well, will. Well, good be for done. again. I mean, he's 70 him. something years old. Now. Well, yeah. I mean, he yeah. tried to leave. They're like, come on, we need you. Yeah. And it's like all right. <laughs> After the Denver. So it will be question. It, it will be tough to see what happens with the Patriots oh, maybe next year. And Flo, Brian Flores without. Bye-bye. A Scarnecchia, a Flores, and the special teams guy's going to be gone, too. He's oh, going really? to Miami as well. Oh, is he going to join? Yeah, he's going to join Flores oh, wow. as well. We're getting Shivano from? Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano. Uh, no, he's... I thought he's going to I thought he's going to take over. That's what they were saying. We'll see. I don't right, know. Fair enough. Or, or does Matt Patricia come back? <laughs> if he's not fired from the Well, he, hey, he still has a job. Fired. Yeah, I'm actually fired. happy they're sticking with him, giving him another chance. Let's change the gear. I know we have a short amount of time, but I do want to talk about Tom's lovely Boston Bruins. Um, they deserve some talk, but I do have to say I'm quite disappointed in what I saw in the last week with uh, losing some key games. And then we also have to deal with maybe Tuka Rask might be out for a while. Any updates? No, he's, uh, he shouldn't be out. They have a week. They have nine days off for the All Star break. It's concussion protocol. He'll have an extra two days of rest. He got his bell rung. In case some of you didn't see what happened, um, this was the last game before this yeah. break started, and McAvoy was near the net and he went for a hit. And the player from was it the New York Rangers they played to end the to end it with? I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Completely body slammed Tuka Rask in the net, and he had to leave the game, and Halak had to come in. I'm not a big Halak fan, but go ahead. We know. Um, no, I don't think he's going to be – I don't think he shouldn't – if anything, he'll miss one game. Um, but, like I said, concussion well, that's, that's protocol. That's good news then. Uh, con- well, that's what they were saying during the, during the game too. Um, I mean, I didn't – I missed it. Um, but that's what they were, that's what the commentators are saying. And what's well. going to change here for the Bruins after the All Star break? Because at certain points they have a very good team, and they're a very likable bunch. They're gritty. They got a lot of energy. They got a lot of heart. But it seems they're missing things. What's going to change for them? Uh, putting more pucks to the net. I I the games. What I've seen from the games that I've watched in like the last week, I haven't seen a lot of offense. Um, and I mean they're fighting. Is that for concerning? The, they're fighting for the puck. I yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is very concerning. Um, I don't know why, but what's so out in the I market? Miss, what can the Bruins do out there? Is there a certain player that could come in and help? I don't know if there is one this year. I mean, last year they had Brian Gianta. They had Jerome McGinley in the past. They had Yager in the past. This year, I don't. Last think, year was Nash, and he didn't do anything. Well, it was Nash and Gianta. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then he retired this year. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there is a player this year like one of those guys. I think everybody's hanging on to them and trying to figure stuff out with their team. Um, but 
I missed, uh, like, I missed, uh, well, when I was on vacation, I, I didn't get to watch the games, uh, but I missed a few, a couple after, and all of a sudden I'm watching the games and saw Arx in the game playing, and I have no idea why. Well, that was a good call-up, because he's actually done pretty well since he has come up. He's done decent, but it, it's... He scored, I know, two goals the game he came up. Yeah, but then they seem to fall off the... It's it's that coming up and then they kind of tank. Right they get there. they get excited and they you know do have a good performance and then. I am most concerned with Charlie McAvoy. Either he's hurt, or he is missing some component that's going to get him to the next stage to be a solid defender in the NHL. He has been a shell of himself this whole entire year, in my opinion. I don't... Can't stay healthy. He's been weak defensively. Stupid turnovers. Costly injuries. Yeah, I don't think he's still back to 100% healthy. Um, What's up with him? I just yeah, think what he, is going on? What is going on, oh, Dr. Man. Tom? Please I, tell us. I just, I just think he needs to get back to 100%. I think he's been – I think they've kind of been rushing him back too quickly from his injuries. Um, but at the same time, it's good because he needs to we, – we, Bruins have had and, a lot of injuries this year. A lot. Bergeron being out was one big one. Then you had Kevin Miller out for a while. You You had Chara out. It's just been an injury-laden season. A lot of defensemen out. A lot. This year. You know, they've been able to survive on it, but they need another big scorer. Krejci's actually been much of a surprise this year, I'd say. He's kind of back to well, the Krejci of old from, like, the Cups I mean, what, what we talked about before uh, on the last episode or the episode before that, when Bergeron was down, we were saying that when Bergeron comes back, Pasenak should be on Bergeron's line. I mean, um, Krejci's line. And I've noticed throughout the games that they Cassie has been doing that every now and then in the games, and it seems yep. like Krejci plays a whole lot better when Pasternak's on the ice with him than when Pasternak's not on the ice. I mean, you got. I would change it up because your first line really isn't doing much right now. They've not been great. And no. I think a lot of it's from injury from Bergeron, but and I mean, all you really something's got to give. All you really need on that line is a good puck handler and then Bergeron and Marchand. Like, all, that's all you need. Is they can make the plays. So maybe they'll get lucky and find somebody out there that can be a help on that second or third line. But right now, they're getting killed from Bacchus because Bacchus isn't doing diddly squat. And they still have a lot of money that's owed to him. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're really not getting much production from really anybody else. I mean, Krejci's been a a solid contributor. Well, Bacchus has has had a couple goals. DeBrusque has had a few goals in, like, the last couple weeks. And he's been hurt, too. Yeah. So... You can't really get on him that much. I'm a big fan of DeBrusque, uh, but I think DeBrusque needs some help with whatever's on his line. It's just they don't have the depth, I think, right now. I'd like to see, I'd like to see him on the uh, Bergeron line. I will tell you, that too, that I do feel the Bruins miss a big-time enforcer still. They, like When they played against the, was it the Canadians at one point, when the Canadians beat them, one of the things that was really missing was that Sean Thornton type. Adam McQuaid, you mean, who they yeah, played against last, exactly, last game? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. McQuaid's missed. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's those stupid things from signing players to big contracts who aren't doing anything. That's got to change. So that's why, in my eyes, Don Sweeney's on the hot seat right now. That's your GM. He's got to figure it out because I've seen enough of what's gone on right now. You gotta, you're getting another year older with Bergeron and Marchand. Put the pieces together and go win a cup, please. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a good and bad thing. They haven't really gone anywhere in the standings. They haven't gone down, but they haven't gone up either. Um, whereas last time we filmed, Buffalo was at the top of the standings. Now, they, now they've, they've been of, moving down, they like, down, like I predicted. Right. right. Um, so, I mean, and... Calgary is at the top of the West. Crazy how that can change like that very but, quickly. You know, but it's... I'm a big fan of uh, Johnny Gaudreau, mm-hmm. so that's a big player that's um, He'll be over the with All-Star the Flames. So I wish that game, he was so... a member of the Bruins or something. But Should have he been. Just he's a Massachusetts product. He is. 
I'm um, sorry for nap time over there with the hockey no, I had a, talk. I, had a good time. <laughs> I need I was to in cover a whole that. World. I was so we want to wake you up back to this world because we have to talk about the green team. Sure. And what team? The green teamers. Do I take a seat? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you can take your nap now. Yeah. Like kind of I want. Well, no, I mean you guys said um, all I. I like to you, call. But you the, said everything I was going to say. Oh, good. Me, so good, why did I need good. to? So <laughs> please, please, and please enlighten me a little bit on the big frauds. I mean the uh, Boston Celtics right now. Oh, Thank you. Lord, wow. <laughs> mm. Coming at me hot. Mm. Um, yeah. No. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? How are they? The the expectation. When obviously sure, the yeah. season began was up. Oh, this team is NBA Finals Stacked. bound. Get get print the tickets. The Warriors and the Celtics. Yeah, I mean something along those lines. I know, and we've lines. we've had this conversation um, about that. How that like the people who they feel to embellish me, it is just kind of it's crazy. They feel to me like they are an an, an unlikable, uh, <laughs> sure. unwinning, very arrogant, cocky. Selfish. Try and think if I can come up with other terms to describe them. I don't um, think they're selfish. I know no, what you're getting at. They don't look like they're a bunch of winners. I mean, I guess. Um, I in the Help NBA, me buy into them again. No, what, I can't. I'm okay. not going to do that. I'm just going to hate with facts that you okay, ignore. please. But it's just... <laughs> no, they've won five... Face the facts, Nick. <laughs> no, no. I, listen, I know. People want to have... People want this team that they had last year, and it, it's still there, but it's not uh, its not being advertised as it once was. Yep. You also have Kyrie, who's kind of gone ape poopy, or whatever, however you want to put it. Yep. And Kyrie is Kyrie, You're gonna, and he's playing, his lights, uh, playing lights out. I will say Kyrie's been their best player of the, season, of the, of the year, correct? Uh, he's one of them, yeah, okay. for the season. Yeah. The team from last year isn't really there, though, because Hayward's there. Sure. I mean, uh, I would argue, yeah, I mean, they're all there, and Hayward is there as on top of it, and I think it's just like a matter of it's still going to be that where do we put all these pieces? But it's kind of it's falling into place a bit, and if it won the last five, and I do think they'll they'll go on a kind of streak now. I think they're in a place now where they feel comfortable enough. And I think last night's game, not to date the show, but it always gets dated, and it, it shows because yeah. people don't know we're old. Yep. Yeah, because we'll, <laughs> well, but uh, no, the game against Cleveland, which both Al Horford and Kyrie didn't need to be there, and they weren't because they're pretty much resting up. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Golden State game, which is on Saturday, uh, which will be you know, we're gonna home or away. It'll be home, uh, January twenty six. So, and the Cleveland game, Jalen Brown had a great game. He was aggressive. Um, Terry Rozier had a good game. He had like a team on like twenty six. I think Jalen had like twenty two or something mm -hmm. from like a thirteen of eighteen. Like it was a pretty good percentage of shooting. It was like thirteen of eighteen or like thirteen of fifteen, and like uh, two or three from the three. It's just the same same story. More aggressive players need to drive to the basket. Okay. And when you don't have Aaron Baines or if you don't have a big man, or if, you, or if Al Horford is hurt, it's tougher to defend down there. Aaron Baines is a great defender down there. He was out for like a month when they were like slipping back into like their older. Yeah, Baines stuff. being back seems because I've I've started to get back into them yeah, now. I mean, with I'm like one of those bandwagons. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it's just but that's. I think you were turned off by that initial. I was. I was turned that off from that yep. weirdness. Yep. Which I like. Baines is a, a big lot. part of this team. Yeah, of course. You, that's a reason why they brought him back. Yeah. Him and Marcus Smart and Marcus Moore serve, in their own way, a very, like, you talk about with the Bruins, like, a uh, real enforcer type. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and with Baines, he can, he can provide some offense, but he is a great guy who you just put in there to be your, Rebounds. your rebounding guy. And also your muscle guy to uh, go up against your bigs like a Cousins or an Anthony Davis or mm -hmm. something else. Dishing elbows. Dishing elbows. Yeah, dish I mean, honestly, dishing elbows just being there in, in the grit, just like uh, clearing path. Not just like defensively getting rebounds or offensively getting rebounds, but clearing a path to the basket. Mm -hmm. Like doing stuff that Al Horford really uh, can do when he's out. And he, you know, he's been out. His knees haven't been the best, and he's got some yep. wear and tear. And, but I do love Time Lord. I do love Williams. Okay. And I forget how he got that name, but it's great because that yeah. guy can slam it down. And because I think, is he's he Doctor well, Who? Was, was late for his press conference. That's how we oh, got the name. Oh, is it? Yeah. I thought he was like a was Doctor Who fan. When they drafted him, he had a press conference. He missed, yeah, the, yeah, he missed I, the phone call. I do remember And then that. he missed the plane yes. to get there for the first well, day of like, like train hour, workouts. Like a telephone interview yeah, is an that's hour behind. Yeah, Robert Williams III. Robert they, Williams. Yeah, Robert Williams Who is a great player. Yes. He, on the floor, you might think he's a lazy, like, uh, I mean, that was his uh, reputation. Oh, he's this lazy kid who doesn't want to work hard. But he's working hard on the court. Like, even if... Pleasant surprise. Yeah, I mean, he's I He's not I an honestly, issue with the, anything going on. I'd rather see him than Yabusali. And, uh, I love Yabusali. Yabu. I mean, he's not... 
that's when you know when you know when uh, Gino is playing on the screens like oh yeah Baselli's in. That's when you know like the white flag yep. from the other team is up, and you know they see that are in control. But yeah, Baselli actually is a decent, uh, actually very good defender, mm-hmm. and he was actually on LeBron last year a couple of times, and he actually helped because he's got a wide behind. That I do remember. He has he's like a, a he's a weeble wobble. Yes, he is. <laughs> I think we had discussed this. But no, I like him too. He the actually is. Uh, I like that. He is. Yeah. You know, don't fall down. We wobble. Don't fall down. So you're telling me that I should remain patient. Uh, and yeah, start... or just enjoy what's happening right now. Okay. Enjoy the build because as we talked about last episode, and we all like it's a long season, mm-hmm. and it's like it's kind of the ha- it's past the halfway point as far as games go. But the All Star break, I think, is next week, and I'm yeah. assuming because the Pro Bowl and NHL All Star. Yeah. Are... Oh, weird. Or NHL All Star. I thought and Pro the Bowl NBA All Star break wasn't until like that it's President's Day. No, you're right. It's Valentine's Day. Right. It's like yeah. around the Valentine's yep. Day. That's yep. right. Because every time I think a buddy of mine, I had a chance to go one year, and I'm married, so shockingly, and it was. Um, <laughs> but, I'm single. I well, mean. I mean, I my boot. He's is single. That's ready a surprise. To yeah, that's no, a yeah, surprise. So, but no, I was my buddy who lives in LA who used to live here. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got, like, these tickets for, I think it was in San Antonio, I forget where it was, in Dallas or San Antonio, like, five years back. I'm like, yeah, I really want to go. It's like, oh, it's like Valentine's Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, that ain't happening. I'm sorry, buddy. Mm-hmm. But maybe, I don't think, at one weekend she won't care. And, like, well, I have the luxury of having my birthday the day before Valentine's Day. Oh, really? Day. Yeah. So the 13th? Yes. Oh, wow. Well. So, you should go. Well, you're not as big. Uh, you like basketball, but you're, you wouldn't go to the All-Star If game. I was to, I mean, I think it would be quite a take. Yeah. I wouldn't go to the All-Star game anymore. I, 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 yeah. think it's... I would say for me it goes baseball, hockey, football, basketball. Yeah, All right. You might be surprised with that. I've I always am surprised. I've, so baseball, football, hockey? hockey? I've always enjoyed so baseball, hockey, hockey the most because it's so physical yeah. and it's very fast-paced and quick and exciting. Sure. You know, same kind of with football and all, but... Yeah, mine's hockey, football, baseball. And I never played and, hockey. It was yeah. one of those big regrets. What's that other sport with that orange ball? Uh, yeah. B-ball. Yeah, I don't know what that B- is. I mean, I always played I was, basketball. I'm short. Physical, I was I'm, short, yeah. so that's why basketball never was my Well, then thing. you're the Marcus Smart uh, runt of the litter. That's where you're... Yeah, I am a runt, Well, yes. that's... Yes. No, I play... I'm not big either. I'm like 5'10", <laughs> 5'11", so I always played... But I always But loved, that's not short either. Well, it's not big in basketball. I mean, unless... My five you know. five self thinks otherwise. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well no, but you, you then you work on your outside. Back. Um, I was a stupid kid who thought I could do post work all the time. Right, like Kevin McHale. Mm-hmm. And it worked a little bit until I'm like, oh yeah, everyone else is growing. Yeah. I'm like, this is not good. In the land of giants. But so the moral say, of yeah. the story here is: let's stay patient with the Celtics. Yeah. I, I'll t- I'll try my best. I'll take a Xanax. I'll <laughs> calm down and not. But I'm, Kids, don't do drugs. Don't oh. yet. Yeah. Or, That's a drug? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, over-the-counter stuff. That's all. <laughs> Always respect your dealers. Um, <laughs> no, but this... No, yeah, take a Xanax, relax, and just oh, enjoy what's going on yeah. right now, because they're only going to get better. Yep. And your tone explode. <laughs> Dog, We're done. Uh, I'll give, let's just give five seconds enough for you to cut all of it. Uh, cut? No. Um, <laughs> Overall, let's see what happens with the team. Like we said, Baines is being Baines is back. Time Lord Baines. Let's see what happens against the Warriors because I think that's the a Celtics great have test. always played well against yeah. them. And I don't so know. I'll really look yeah. forward to it. I forgot that was coming up this week. No, so. it is. And Boogie Cousins has been playing with them the last couple of games. I think he played one game. I don't know if he yeah. played two. Oh. But I'm interested to see all that. And it's kind of insane to Hopefully think Boogie he can Cousins. dance his way off the garden and not have to deal with Oh, I don't know, you man. You mean Boogie his way off the garden? Bo- oh. oh! I think that was implied, Tom. But yes. I like the alley yeah, ju- just, just in case they, uh, <laughs> I didn't get no it. one yeah. understands it. Our, our, sugar our on top. audience let's, might not understand. Let's call so. it the sugar on top. Yes. The ones that are asking their parents what the day. Yeah. Well... I think that wraps up our lovely show. For May a, show I, or two a hot take I emailed to you guys didn't get back to me about. Oh. Trade Carson Wentz and sign Nick Foles for the Eagles. I, you ha- um, definitely. I think that's because mm-hmm. you, you're not, I don't know. That's just. Wentz is younger. Yeah, but he's, he hasn't finished a full season. But it's two years. I, if I were the Eagles, that's what I'd do. Nick Foles yeah. is your quarterback. Nick Foles is magic If they go in to trade Foles, I mean. They can't. They, yeah. You know how they, they say, fly, Eagles, fly? Yeah. It'll be by Eagles, by just like we have to do right now. So, anyways, <laughs> I'm Nick Face for Tom Smith, Phil Healy. We will see you next time, hopefully on a uh, championship Super Bowl edition of Face the Facts. You never know. Okay. We'll see. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.